had something this morning. This morning, I want we're gonna finish off this series our defenses today, and we're gonna we, we've been going through the gates. If you guys remember, we, we finished last week with the eye gate, and today we're gonna cover the last four. These last four gates are awesome. So I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys have been watching the series. Actually, it's now taking on it's the most watched series we've ever had. Yeah, so it, that is really good. So I said, like, wow. I mean, our, the, the biggest series we've had in the past was My Identity. We went, that, we went over there almost two years ago, but that's just something for, you know, people are thinking about, you know, thinking about their identity, trying to figure out who they are. So people have been going through that, but now this has taken over. So that's it's really good. So folks are definitely watching this series. It can't be all of us. The numbers are greater than us. So, but that's good. We, we, let's keep watching it. Hey, you, you never know, okay, how the Lord's going to plant that seed in someone. You never know what's going to plant that seed. You know, I think about my son and, and my wife and my barber just talking to me here and there. Somebody that didn't care for Christians at all. You know, every time I see my old barber when we run, he kind of just, I mean, when I run across him, he kind of just gives me that little smirk, that little laugh, like, look at you now. Look at you now. Somebody that was sitting in his chair and said, man, don't talk to me about no Christian crap because I don't want to hear it. Look at me now. Thank God. Thank, thank God that he, he allows us to change and he, uh, he cleans us up and, and he makes us brand new. And I mean, thank God Amen. that we are still here Amen. and I get a chance to praise his name. Amen. 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 So get, get your Bibles out. If you have your Bibles, we're going to Romans 10, 17. Of course, we will put this on the board. So Romans 10, 17. And we're going to kick in today with Garden Gates Part 2. And we're going to start with our ears, our hearing, our hearing. Romans 10, 17. And before I get into that, I want to start with a story like I usually do. And you know, when I played ball, I was, that was, that time was everything to me. And I was the ball player was football for you guys that don't know me. And I remember when in college, you know, you, one thing about college, everything is that you, you have that kind of next level. And so, you, you know, your thought process and motivation, you got to be ready to go on that field. I know some of us have even played for the same school, but, you know, you, you got to be ready to, to go on that field. You got to be ready to give it your all. You know, and sometimes when you come in that locker room, you, you don't have the right mindset. When you come in that locker room, you know, I'm going to say it to be honest with you guys, you know, when you're on that field, you know, you kind of want to have that little anger, that little push, you know, that right now, because I'm going to run somebody over, I'm going to beat somebody up, I'm going to take care of business, and you want to get your mindset there. So most times what the fellas do, especially when I went to school, they would put on some music. Okay, and it was like usually that hardcore rap, and I used to listen to one song in particular, which is a terrible song, so nobody listened to this. Unless you want to hear what it is and make sure you listen to it by yourself. But the song was by Tupac and it was called Hit Him Up. I mean, Hit Him Up was a, I mean, a rough song. I'm going to tell you that right now. But it will put you in a mindset when you're ready to fight right now. That's how rough the music is. Now, it took me to a place where I wanted to destroy somebody who was in front of me. So when you go on that field, you're ready to play, you're ready to explode upon somebody. You're ready to give them all that you have because that's now what's inside of you. So I wanted to bring this to you this morning because that's what I took in, that's what I was hearing. And everything I'm going to talk about when we talk about gates, remember, your gates allow things to come on the inside of you. So I took something in that transformed me. So understand what you listen to, what you take in through your ears, what you take in through any of these gates have the ability to transform you. And I thought about this right here. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the words of Christ. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the words of Christ. So hearing transforms you. Even this right here. Faith has the ability of what? The hearing of God's word has the ability to transform you to a faithful person. Or to your faith itself. So we start thinking about this right here. So one more time, we'll go back over. Go give me the scripture again. Sure. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the words of Christ. So Christ's words, Christ's words transforms your faith. But it comes from hearing. Now, the part, part, cold part about this, the part we don't get in our English is this hearing through the words of Christ. Okay, a lot of you guys, scripture may say even through the words of God. But this hearing through the word of Christ, is, this word right here means rhema word. This is not the Logos. Okay, because if you talk about the Logos or the Logos itself, okay, that, that's the written word. That's the account. So your Bible, when you, you have your Bible, you, that's, that's the Logos. But Ramatos, or Rhema. Okay, when somebody says Rhema to you, that's a spoken word. Now, anybody can speak Rhema because that's speaking itself. But it's very specific, this Rhema word we're talking about right now. This is the Rhema words of Christ. 
So the spoken words of Christ. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing the spoken word of Christ. Now, this is important. Why is this such a huge thing? Because in our scripture, the Lord says, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Now, when we start taking that in, we say, well, we, we may not hear Jesus, or we may not hear God audibly yet at this time. But God will speak to you in a way which you can understand him. Okay, even that a still small voice, he will find a way to get to you, right? Because that's the voice that's directing you to do that very specific thing in your life that he wants you to do. Did you guys get that? Amen. See, when we have the written account, the written account is an awesome word. Because God will never go against his word. So remember we talked about a couple weeks ago how thoughts may come to you? Okay, but every thought that comes to you is not from you. Sometimes the devil will speak a thing to you and you say, yeah, that's, I didn't, where did that come from? And you guys already know what I'm talking about. You had some crying, wicked, crooked thing. You just had pop right in your mind. And you said, go do it. I can't do that. That wasn't you. Okay, then you have that word that comes in you that's going to challenge you to be better. It's going to challenge you to do a little more. It's going to challenge you to step out to that next level. And that's that still small voice that comes to you. And you know the Holy Spirit himself is speaking right on the inside of you. Okay, telling you to go forward, move forward, to move forward in the purpose that God has planned for you. Yes, See, this is, this is your hearing God is talking about right here. Your hearing can work for you, can work against you. So you have to be careful what you allow to come in. Okay, it is something when we're little kids. You know, and it's, it's once again, Talking about football, talking about the schoolyard. You know, all the little boys want to do, if, if you want to get mad at somebody and you want to fight, you say, your mama. And I, 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 it sounds so stupid, right? I mean, we, we grown folks, but it sounds so stupid. But when we were little kids, you know, eight, nine, ten year old kids, your mama. Okay, you only said that if you wanted to fight because you knew a fight was coming. I mean, you had a little purpose in the world. Okay, you for the challenge him. He said, your mama, he was going to fight. Because if, I'm going to stand up for something. Okay, my mom is worth standing up for. You know, even when I was little, people said, your daddy, that don't mean nothing to me. But, you know, but your mama missed something. I, I never knew why that was. But you never heard nobody say, your daddy, you know, but that's what it meant. I don't, I don't know if daddy wasn't home. I, I don't know what it was. But that, that didn't matter. All I'm trying to get over to you guys right now, watch what you put on the inside of you because it has the ability to transform you. When we're talking about these gates, guys, the gates into your mind, remember your mind, what your mind releases on the inside of you works its way into your soul. Amen. Okay, you must remember that. Okay, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, okay, whether this thoughts, I call it a direct attack a couple weeks ago, we have direct thoughts come to your mind. Okay, you got to, hey, be careful, make those thoughts obedient to the word of Christ. Okay, what you hear is something easy can go into your mind. I was listening to a song. Just a couple days ago, I just a brand new song. I didn't know what it was. It just came on the radio as I was going home. And I, I think I wrote the name of the song down. I did. And uh, um, the song said, I need to lose you to love me. A, a brand, and I thought I was, you know, I'm sitting there. I said, that's kind of cool. And it got a, got a good melody. I like, I like a little EDM now because of Maya. And, and, so, and I've been listening. That's electronic, I think, dance music. Am I saying that right? A little, a little, because of, uh, little EDM. So it's, it kind of got that vibe. And then you know, she's talking about, you know, how she had to lose this guy to love herself. You know, and I'm sitting there listening to that song, and all of a sudden I went back 25 years in my mind. She ain't no good. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Think about that just for a moment. She ain't no good. I'm sitting, I said, wait a minute, Charles. You talking about something 25 years ago. See how something can easily just, just like that change your thought process? Change the way you think, okay, it transforms you to who it wants you to be right now. It's not a bad song. But it's how it affects you that makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. See, certain things you can listen to, it don't bother you at all. Certain things, like I said, even last week, you can watch with your eyes, it don't bother you at all. It don't bother you at all. You at all. But then you come across something that has the ability to transform you. It actually gets through the mind and comes into who you are. Okay, you have to watch how things come inside of you. Because if you don't guard the gates, right, we're talking guarding the gates here. If you don't guard the, those gates, okay, you, you're not acting out because you're thinking a certain way. And whatever works its way into your heart will come out of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, anybody ever watch something and been mad about something 25, 30, 50 years ago? Yes, Just like it was yesterday. It's a fresh new memory. Every time you go back in the past and, and have that memory, 
Your mind itself, your body does not know that you're not living that out right now. Isn't that something? I mean, it's a scientific thing. I, I didn't even, it, just, it blew me away. It made sense how you could be just as mad at something right now, but it took place 10, 20, 30 years ago. I'm going to get her right now. She dead. You can't get her no more. <laughs> but you have that thought process. Just like, because you relive the moment. Your body, your it doesn't know it's not reliving the moment right now. The same thing, you get mad, you know, you can sit here and all of a sudden the blood starts going, you're starting to get all huffed up, and then you, your, your blood is flowing through your body. Hey, your body's reliving it. Amen. See, that's why we let things go. That's why we don't take certain things in. The reason I don't listen to that gangster rap like I used to anymore, because I know what I was listening to and why I was listening to it at that time. Okay, yes, it made me upset. Yes, it made me want to fight and do other things. But that same rap, I got to be so careful about it because even when I listen to it, there's a little thing feeling that goes right inside of me that it connects with. It connects with the old person. The person that's not supposed to be awake, the person that's supposed to be dead inside of me. And that little thing can start waking that person up again. Remember, see, and, and, and it's somehow the Lord created to be a new creature, but the old creature is still lying dormant. See, we don't get ready, we don't actually get rid of the actual flesh, okay, until the body dies. See, the flesh is the old person I'm talking about, right? See, if you walk in the spirit, the spirit can control you. But if you walk in the flesh, the flesh will control you. But the spirit has the ability to overpower your flesh. But when you feed the flesh, it starts to awaken. Amen. 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 So when you feed the flesh, it starts to awaken, right? I, I can't remember the old, the old wise tale they used to have. I'm talking about the two whoops. You know, uh, and it, but the thought process I'm gonna give you right now, it, it was two wolves. One, one was a nice wolf, a good wolf, and, and the other one was, was a terrible, mean wolf. Say so you decide to feed, whatever one you feed is going to basically live. Same thing when it comes to you. See, you can spirit, feed your spirit the word of God to build it up, continue to build it up, or you can continue to feed the flesh and watch your flesh win out. So we have to be careful of who we're feeding on the inside of us. Yes, all one and the same. But it's how it was what you, when you hear certain things, you're feeding yourself. Here it is. And let me give it. Let's go to Mark. Mark 4, chapter 4, verse 23. This is Jesus talking. He says, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use it, it will be measured to you and still be, will be added to you. And I wrote this right here. How much understanding you take in is how much understanding you can use. How much understanding you take in is how much understanding you can actually use. Now, it's something simple like right here. I might teach somebody in this room. I, I used to do a little electrical work when I was a young, young kid. Uh, not young kid, a uh, young adult. And so I can go in there and I can rewire these plugs. And if I'm teaching somebody how to rewire plugs, that they'll have that understanding. But inside of me, I may know how to you know, rewire these lights. I may know how to rewire a panel back there. But if, I, if I'm sitting there, even with Clyde, and I can say, Clyde, this is how you do this. But if Clyde is not paying that much attention, okay, he can't do that much with that. Why? Because he didn't gain much understanding okay, when it was time for him to listen. We always hear the, the, the thought process of listen first, you know, speak later. You know, with the, and even in the word of God, so, you know, we talk about you should listen first. Take in first. Make sure you have a full understanding before you ever speak. But we live in a generation now, even in my generation, we have the same problem. We want to be seen. We want to be heard before we ever have understanding. Amen. Before we ever have understanding. I, I think about T.D. Jackson. I remember him uh, uh, having, talking to a lot of the, the fellows about this as he was preaching one day. And he says, fellas, it, it's something, he's talking to ministers. It's somehow we want to be heard, but we haven't went through anything yet. Or we haven't had any life experience to line up what we're trying to teach on. He says, it's, it's, see, people can come to, come to you and they, you can say the exact same thing as me. But we say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to kill it, get rid of that mosquito. And for you, you don't mind getting it out. <laughs> and, and, and so they can say the exact same thing as me. But when you say the exact same thing I'm saying, people may say, well, that sounds good. But when I say it, it's like the word of God. Right. He said, why is that? He says, because right now my voice is carrying weight. My voice is carrying weight. And it takes time for your voice to carry weight. So give yourself time for the Lord to elevate you. Give yourself time for the Lord to take you to that next level. Okay, and understand this right here. You must start by paying attention to what he asks you to do. So when the Lord speaks to you a certain thing, okay, because the Lord is the one who gives you this weight, when he speaks to you a certain thing, act out on it. Okay, do what he asks you to do. 
When the Lord is, you know, saying, my sheep hear my voice, believe that he's talking to you. Believe that he's trying to get you to that next level. But be willing to go through the process. Because see, what you're able to hear, what you're able to take in and truly understand, then you can act out on it. Okay, you can't act out on anything if you don't have any understanding. You can only give what you have. Let's go a little further. I was going to tell a little story, but I want to make sure I get through all these things this morning. Um, in Isaiah, in Isaiah 30, verse 20, it says, I know the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore. But your eyes shall see your teacher and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. Here it is again. Your teacher will be behind you. He's speaking to you. Your teacher lives inside of you, speaking to you, guiding you. Why? Because the, what the God is trying to do with all this right here is trying to keep you on, on a certain path, keep you learning things, understanding things, but keep you walking on that path where he's going to protect you. A lot of times, you know what? We, we, we put ourselves through our own trials. Yes, sir. I'm not saying we put ourselves through every trial, but we, we put ourselves through a lot of our own trials in this lifetime. Yes, we absolutely do. I mean, we run the walls and we keep running to the same wall. We're trying to figure out why we run through the walls. Why well, you keep doing it? You know, we, we got this cycle. You know, it's not going to hurt this time. It's going to hurt. <laughs> the wall does not move. The wall does not move. I had a buddy. It's a true story when I went to Arizona. I had a buddy. And uh, this buddy, you know, we say, man, you know, you, you get too drunk when you go out. So, you know, we, we can't always take you with us. And for some odd reason, we decided to take him with us this night. Did you guys just hear me? We already told him we're not going to take him with us. And here he is with us again, you know. And this night, he do the exact same thing. But he decided to run out the club, run full speed, and he didn't know it was a brick wall. And the way he was running, ran straight into that brick wall like it was going to move, like it wasn't there. I mean, jacked him up. But this is how we do a lot of things in our lives. We know what the wall is already there, but we're going to try to see if we can bust through it. That's a closed door for a reason. That's not a wall for you to bust through. If God wanted you to go through it, it wouldn't be a wall there. There would be a door open. But yet, because you don't, we're strong. We're going to do things our way. We're going to do things our way. And then we can say, well, I'm going to get my sledgehammer. I'm going to get, I'm going to get the jackhammer. I'm going to do everything it takes to break down that wall. And then you finally, somehow, you make it through that wall. Now God says, you know what? Go on. Go on. You deserve what's behind that wall. I mean, we do that as parents, right? You, you deserve to get what's behind that wall. Everything behind that wall is for you because you keep pursuing it. I mean, we, have we done that in life? On many things in life. I don't even talk about relationships. I don't need to go there, right? Because you, some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Y'all knew y'all shouldn't have went after her. You knew you shouldn't have went after her. And you try to figure out what's going on. You knew what was going on. Okay, you had 13 kids when you met them. <laughs> but he's going to take care of you. You know, I mean, that's how it works. Sometimes I sit there and I can listen to my sister. I love my sister's stories. They don't know how much I love their stories. And then I, I, I said, I just take it in. I said, oh my goodness. I'll be sitting there like, why would you go down there? You know, you can't say it out loud. Not without one of them choking you out, right? You don't want to get choked out, but you, you have to love the story. Because it sounds like this is, this is amazing. But we all do it. We all do it. We just do it in different ways. But Lord, I'm trying to guide you. Okay, don't turn to the left or to the right. Just listen to my voice and follow what I've asked you to do. Because if you stay the course, I'm going to keep you away from all this crap. Okay, you're going to just watch and see okay, what happens to the others. Okay, but it won't happen to you. Look, let's go a little further. because we, we had a couple things we did this morning that's going to take away from our time. So let's go to nose. Actually, let's go to Proverbs. Let's, I want to read this last scripture about hearing. And this is Proverbs 1.5. This is a good scripture for you guys. It says, let the wise hear and increase in learning. And the one who understands obtain guidance. Let the wise hear and increase in learning. And let the one who understands obtain guidance. I'm going to leave you with that. That's just a good thing to meditate on. Let's go to, our, let's go to the nose, which is smell. You ever thought about every time we're thinking about smelling or breathing? Breathing is, is, is our form of life. If you can't breathe, you are not alive. Isn't it something? I think a lot of Christians forget this. You know, we were always meant to have a body. 
Sometimes we think so spiritually that we forget that we were meant to have a body. When God created Adam and Eve, remember, he created the body and breathed into us his spirit, right? So and, and, and this is important because even in the end, remember, it's a two-part salvation that we're going through. Remember, our, our, our spirit is saved first when we give our life to Jesus, right? But when the coming of the Lord, okay, our, our, the new body will be raised back up, right? So we, we'll be connected to the new body, the perfect body. See, right now you're living in the body of humiliation is what the Bible talks about. Okay, this is not the perfect body. This is not the body that Jesus now has. Okay, Jesus don't have the fallen body anymore. He don't have the body that can get sick. He don't have the body that can have colds and flus and cancer. He doesn't have that body. He has the perfect body. Okay, we're going to be in the same shape. We are now our spirit when we gave our spirit to God. Okay, we're going to have that. Per we have the perfect spirit now. The problem is we're dealing with a fallen soul. Because see, if the fallen soul is part of the fleshy body. Now, this is important. Because see, as we, we, we take things in, as we start thinking about the breath of life that God breathes inside of us, God gave us his life. Sometimes it's not in the Bible, we all say Zoe life. That means the life of God is living inside of us. The life of God is empowering us. And that's what Adam and, Eve, Adam and Eve had. But Adam and Eve also had the Holy Spirit, God himself, living inside of them. You guys got to get this because when I go through the last portion of it, it's going to amaze you. Because we know we lost the Spirit of God upon us. Okay, it means the Holy Spirit had was kicked outside. God could no longer reside inside of us because he could not reside with sin. Okay, the only way he can reside in us now is because the blood of Jesus covers us or cleanses us of the sin inside of us. So when I start going here through this portion, I want to make sure I explain that first part. Because in Genesis 2, 7, it says, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living creature. So we received God's breath and then we became whole. Remember becoming whole. See, we're never whole without the God. We, we're, never, we're not whole without God living on the inside of us. If we start thinking about this right here, just for a moment, okay, without God's breath inside of us, without the breath of life, God's breath of life inside of us, we are in part. That's why we're fallen. Okay, when God was talking about dying to Adam and Eve, they didn't actually physically die right away. Matter of fact, it, it would seem that they lived hundreds of years after that. Now, we do not know long, how long they lived in that garden. We don't know how long they lived there. Okay, we don't know how many, you know, actual physical days have actually taken place. We don't know any of that. Okay, you say on the sixth day, God created man. And, 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 and put, then he placed him in the garden. Then they say on seven, God's seventh day, he rested. Okay, we don't know when they fell short. We don't know how long, how many eons. They could have been there for thousands and thousands of what we call years. We don't know that portion of it. But we do know, okay, time started to matter when, time, when they could run out of time. And, and, and that's something about time. Time doesn't matter when you don't run out of it. But when you start running out of time, it matters to you. Time also has a way of putting you in fear because of that. Even God uses that. Isn't that something how God will use time against you? When I mean to use it against you, you know, we don't live forever. So we only have a, chance, a certain chance, a certain cycle, or a certain moment in which we can actually make a choice for him. So he doesn't want you to run out of time upon this earth where we can make that choice. The other side of it, time can put you in the fear that God doesn't want you to have. Right? We said somebody's uh, doctor has announced something upon your life, not the doctor itself, but some kind of disease or something that's gotten a hold of you. Well, you only have so much time to live. There's a fear that comes on there, right? Because the doctor's telling you what he sees, which is fair. That's what he's supposed to be. He's telling you what he sees. And he's done a good job at doing that. But the other side of it is, he's now to pronounce, giving you a date in which how long you're supposed to live here on out. And they don't have control of that time. Because the only person that has control of time is God himself. Now, we, we have to go there. Because we see the one who makes you whole, the one who makes you complete, is the one that gives you your time. And if you guys truly take that in what I just said, nothing here can be in control of your time but our Heavenly Father. Nothing here can be in control of your time but your Heavenly Father. He has all control. That's why when somebody can sit there and they can sit there and mess with the wrong person. Well, you know, we see this in your body. We see this sickness here and I'm giving you three months to live. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Be careful. Okay, thank you for your diagnosis, but I do not accept okay, what you just said to me. Because only God speaks that into my life. Like Isaiah said, you know, who's going to believe our report? Isaiah was on the side of God and said, that's how we have to be. You know, you have to be on the side of God on certain things. You know, oh, whoa, whoa, that didn't line up the way it's supposed to be. You better like, like Isaiah, there's the Lord. 
You know, it's like that line that's saying on the old cartoon. You remember? Am I gonna be with the big dog? Or I'm gonna sit over there with Tom. You all remember, y'all remember Tom the cat? Remember, Tom was always getting beat down. That's why Jerry was fighting was around. Was <laughs> yeah, y'all remember that right there? You remember how Jerry used to step to the side? Like I'm with him. You know what I'm saying? Tell you this, this, this fight come over. Boom! And now you know that that's done. Yeah, y'all don't remember that? So come on now. I mean, I'm not over everybody up in here, right? But but that's the way it is. That's the way Isaiah was. Okay, I'm gonna get on the side of power. Because the closer I get to him, okay, fear has to leave me. Don't you understand? Okay, God only allows okay, the things to approach him that he wants to allow. But you have the right to walk in. This is Hebrews 10 19 by the, to the throne of grace. Because of the blood that covers you. That's how you walk in. And it's all because you're a part of him. See this breath that he breathed into you? This breath, excuse me, guys, I'll keep doing this little thing behind me. This breath that he gave you? You ever thought for a moment? Why don't we just cease to exist if we don't get a chance to go to heaven? Why does God just send us to hell? I mean, I mean wouldn't it just be easy just to forget the everlasting punishment, Lord? It's like just such a harsh it's like a, just a harsh sentence. I mean, it's everlasting. It's I mean, eternal punishment. I mean, why is it like that? Don't you understand this breath that he gave you? This breath that he gave you was part of him. Okay, if you could die, God could die. Hold on. This breath that he gave you is part of You see, once God breathed into you, God made a permanent thing from the beginning. We were never meant to actually die. Okay, why is God putting it? Why, why did he put it in the salvation? Why did he put in this two-part salvation for us to bring us back into a righteous place? Even Jesus, when he was talking to the Lord, he says, you know what? Uh, he's already, uh, they have eaten from the tree. And God says, they must be kicked out because they cannot live forever like this. In a fallen state. In a fallen state. They can't live forever in this fallen state. So right away, he put together the plan for our spirit to be renewed. Okay, then the other part, a plan for our body to be renewed. So we can be put back into the place like he created us. We were never meant to die. So even when God says something the second death, he means that's just being removed from me. But no one ever ceases to exist. That breath he breathed into us, we are part of him. So when Jesus came, he says, look at me, I am like the father. I don't know if it's from a physical standpoint. I don't think it's a physical standpoint. He meant the spiritual standpoint. The spirit inside of us, the spirit that empowered the body was never supposed to die. Praise God. I understand what took place. So what you take into you, what you take inside of you, okay, through your nostrils, okay, also has the ability to take your life or give life. I was at the beach one day. And I, this is, I was a grown man already, too. I was probably about 35 years old. This is not too long ago. And, and I remember I was out there, you know, trying to show off in front of my son and and Christian, I'm going way out. And I hear the lights like, don't go so far out. Don't go so far out. The, uh, the, 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 the reptile is really strong. I said, oh, you know, I'm all right. I'm not going that far. I saw a few fellas on surfboards out there. They, you know, I said, I'm going to be all right. You know, I'm out there. I'm a big boy. You know, I'm, you know, I'm doing everything out there, you know, having fun, turning around, trying to put my toes above the water so they could see it. And I went down. So I don't know what happened on top of me, but a wave or something must have hit. I hit that ground so hard with my head. It just, just like that. It, it messed me totally up. I, I, I was, I think it was to the side, but I was just well, discombobulated. I'm not even sure that's a word, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And so, but I had lost my oxygen. It knocked the wind out of me. So now I was trying to gasp for air, and I'm gasping for air, but I'm underwater. So I'm taking in all this water, and because I hit my head, I couldn't figure out what the ground was. Right? So I'm there turning, turning, twisting. I mean, and I was moving like, boom. I kept hitting the ground, so I don't know what kind of wave came in and got me, or maybe part of that riptide got me. I felt like I was going towards the, 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 uh, the beach area, but I tell you what, I was all over that ground. And so finally I emerged, I came up out the water, and I was just gasping, oh, was getting water out. Oh, I mean, grown man, I'm grown this happened to me. And then I'm trying to get everything up. And I tell you, the first thing I did was trying to just get, get me get back to the beach. It's something how something can easily take your breath away. 
Just simply just like that. And I knew I was gasping for air because I, I needed it to live. Absolutely needed it to live. And every time I think about that story, I say, wow, Lord, I, I know you saved me. I, I know you kept me. But I said, I will never be that stupid again. I was not, I mean, just didn't want to listen, didn't want to do right. And, I, and when, I, when I was thinking about last night, I said, well, I thought about that, the harshness of that story. You know, just how the breath was taken out of me and how easy my, my life could have been extinguished. And then I remember a story about uh, one, of my, one of my friends who played baseball, baseball with. His father, unfortunately, had got on some, some drugs. He was smoking a pipe. It was crack pipe. And I remember the, the story about his father was uh, he was sitting there smoking, took a step forward and dropped dead. It is somehow we can put the wrong things inside of us. And just like that, our life can be taken away. See, when you think about this scripture, you think about, you know, these gates right here. We're talking about, you know, our, our breath and, and, and bring, taking things in. Once again, put the right things on the inside of you. Put life inside of you. Life inside of you. In every way, put life inside of you. This life is, is precious. This life also, you know, we... we as big and strong as we are, and as innovative as we are, we're so fragile. So fragile. Even the Lord tells us, it's just, it's, it's just a piece of mist, you know, mist on the timeline of breath. We won't even be able to see it. But take it seriously. Don't put things inside of you. Don't, 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 you know, don't inhale things. Or when you talking about inhale, remember, we're talking about inhaling things. I mean, when you inhale something, it goes right to the center of who you are. That's why I think when we talk about God breathing into us, you know, that goes right to the center of who we are. So take in the right thing. Take me in. Take me in. It's something, when I, even this morning I'm talking to you guys about how we can do nothing apart from God. We couldn't even breathe if he didn't allow us to. Amen? I'm going to finish with the last few kind of quick. I want to I make sure I finish this, this portion of it. Let's go to the mountain. We start thinking about the next day, which is the tasting. And then we start thinking about tasting. I love the scriptures here in Psalm, Psalm 34, 8. It says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see. Isn't it something with the mouth how we taste what's good, we taste what's bad? We, we, we do that on a regular basis. I mean, I'm, I'm an old cook. And so we do that on a regular basis. Even I don't, I don't even cook no more. But you taste a little bit. Of, it's about right. And some of us have tasted so many things, even before we put it in a pot, we know what it's going to taste like. You know what I'm talking about? You know, my, my wife will come to me sometimes. How do you know what that season is going to taste like? I said, well, I can taste it on the inside of me. I, I don't have to just physically taste it anymore. I've tasted it so much, I know what it's going to do to that dish. I, I know what it's going to do, you know, to make it like I wanted to make it, right? And I said, right, she says, I don't have that gift. I think that's a gift. I said, that's a gift? Don't everybody have that? She says, no. And I didn't realize that. I thought everybody had. But the Lord's spirit from a spiritual place, the Lord says you do have the ability to taste and see what's good. Here, you know, taste and see that I'm good for you. Okay, understand, you know, when it says taste and see, that means take a little piece of me, you know, and put me on the inside of you. You know, hey, understand, and you will see what good things I have for you. Taste and see that I'm good. I love this portion of who he is. Because when you understand this right, Lord, you know, just take me in. So many of us, we, we fail to take him in and to see his benefits. I, I've been telling you guys about this too because the Lord has a couple ways in which he brings himself to us. A lot of us wait for the miracle side of it because we love the miracles in the Bible. We all love the miracles in the Bible. I mean, I mean hey, I'm still waiting for a miracle on certain, certain things, but that's not probably the way I'm going to receive everything. That doesn't mean I'm faithless at all. I just know the Lord works most things through the process way. You have to be willing to go through the process so you can allow yourself to be ready for what he's going to give you. But to go through the process, you've got to take him in. you got to take him in to go through the process. See, if you don't take him in and you're wondering why you're failing, hey, you're not willing to go through the process. It's no different than somebody sitting there teaching you about something for a test that you have to take. If you don't take what's in, okay, you're not going to get nothing out of it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Okay, we don't take everything in. We know we don't. And I love that he compares us to food. Because these scriptures in the Bible says, hey, as a matter of fact, I'm going to read them. I don't need to just talk to them. I got them right here. This is in, uh, this is in Revelation 3.16. It 
It says, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Spit you out of my mouth. See, you must have a purpose. See, there's a purpose in water being hot. There's a purpose in water being cold. A lot of people don't know that. They don't think about it that way. But because you're lukewarm, you're useless. Okay, you're not going to quench my thirst by being lukewarm. And you're not going to be able to cook nothing for me because you're not hot. Don't be worthless. That's where that comes from. If you guys go back to, okay, I can't even remember what sermon this is in. But this is Jesus talking, and he was talking about some springs. Okay, they had a, they took two different towns. They were right close to each other, right? And so one town was known for its hot springs, and one spot was, one spot was known for its cold wells. Okay, when we start talking about that analogy between those, I forget the towns this is he's talking about here in Revelation. But as, as, when you think about this right here, he's, as he's bringing this up, see, this town, because it was known for its cold springs, okay, so it's a place where you would go get refreshed, you would drink cold water, you know, it was good for you. Then other town was good to go and relax, heal your body, it's a soothing place. Oh, mud bath, I ain't never had a mud bath, but some people said it ain't good, I never had one person, but so be it, it, one day, right? And so, but think about that, there was a purpose in both of them. But when you wander around purposes, okay, even though he gave you purpose, when you don't do what I ask you to do, when you, when you do things totally on your own and you wonder why you're wandering, you're useless. Remember the old tale of Alice in Wonderland? Okay, you know, this is the old book version right here. Then the Cheshire Cat, Alice walks out to the Cheshire Cat and she's asked the Cheshire Cat, which way should I go? And the Cheshire Cat says, which way, uh, what do you want to do? Or which way do you want to go? She says, I don't know. Then he says, it doesn't matter where you go then. It doesn't matter which way you go when you have no purpose in your life. Amen. No goals. And the Lord is saying you're worthless. Be hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Don't let that be you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Point, the last one is hands. And I just say hands because it really symbolizes touch. And touch. And I want to bring this up for you. And I'm going to go, this is going to tie back into the nose, the breath of life. So get ready. Luke 8, 43 through 46. Luke 8, 43 through 46. It says, And there was a woman who had been discharged of blood for 12 years. And though she had spent all her living on positions, she could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of the garment. Him was Jesus. Came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his garments. And immediately his, her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowd surround you and are pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. For I perceive that power has gone out for me. Now, isn't this something right here? See, touch is something very important in our Bible. Very important. See, we have physical touch. Okay, and we have spiritual touch. But all happens through the body. Right? Because we can be around somebody, and this is like being around Jesus. It's like, anybody touching you, Lord? We just no, somebody touched me. Jesus is not talking about physical touch right now. He's talking about a spiritual touch. Now, this is important. Because he... A certain touch can bring life. See, the physical touch has the ability to bring life. A lot of people forget that for some reason when they read the Bible. Okay, man and a woman get together, a physical touch can bring life into the world. Right? Then the spiritual side of it is, okay, what? A certain kind of touch, a certain kind of spiritual touch through somebody can also bring life. Like Jesus brought life to her. Okay, the power of God working through, through the Spirit can help heal someone, correct? Right? But also, did you know touch can bring death? Get a roll, touch can bring death. Let's go back to the, the first part again here in Genesis. Check this out in Genesis uh, 3, chapter 3, verse 3 through 7. This is Eve speaking. But God said, you should not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. This is the part that most people forget. forget. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. People forget to touch. You shall eat it and you shall not touch it. Because if you touch it, you shall die. You can't just go and put your hands on anything. Learn from that right now. Touch is part of your gates. I, I, I remember when I, when I was a young, young boy, I was a very young boy, I'm telling you right now, I just have some confession. Man, you know, the first thing you want to do with a young girl when you're a young boy is touch on them. Why is that? I can't even say it off the right yourself. It's terrible. It just left my mind up. It, but the reason that is, right? Your touch is not for her. Okay, your touch is absolutely fleshy. 
Okay, we all know that. Most of y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay, it's 100% fleshy. But that's the kind of flesh that can easily bring back. Okay, it brings on the wrong thing. It puts the wrong thing inside of somebody. You know, even when you think about sexual sin, the Lord, you know, Paul talks about sexual sin a lot, right? And the reason is when you, when you have sexual sin, is you are sinning against your own body. You can sin it's outward. But when you sin, when you have sexual sin, it's against even you it's against. Okay, it goes against you. Okay, touch whatever God did. Touch that physical connection ties to spiritual connection at the same time, right? Now, this is real big. I can't do it today. But even through soul ties and things of that nature, all happen because of physical touch. Don't you know when you go into a prostitute, okay, you go into her and all those she's had with? It's a scripture. I'm, I'm, I'm not reading verbatim, but when, don't you know when you go into a prostitute, you go into her and everyone she has had with? Right? When we touch, it's not just something when we touch, it depending on how intimate that touch is. Okay, we have the ability not just to physically touch, but to spiritually touch. So you gotta be careful, okay, who you tie yourself in with. Amen? Amen. Okay, if it's gonna be a touch, let it be a holy touch. Let it be a Jesus side of touch. When somebody goes, who took this power away from me? Because I know it went out for me for the right person. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm gonna end the days. I know I can't get over what I want to.